Chuck. During the mayhem in Chicago after the murder of George Floyd, some Chicago cops abused their police powers during the unrest. That's according to a newly released investigation report by the department's civilian oversight agency. A dozen officers receiving suspension notifications, some for as long as six months. Part of the video in this report is violent and may be disturbing. Just after 8 p.m., May 31st, 2020, officers seen smacking Gabriel Chinchilla and John Fix with their batons, both then students at Columbia College, protesting police brutality. One of them grabbed me and threw me up against the wall. He hit me across the head with a baton, and he threw me to the streets where a couple other police officers were just sitting there waiting for me, basically, to start wailing away with their batons. They sued the city and recently won settlements, 150000 for Chinchilla and 200000 for Fix. We very early on wanted the city to be accountable and more specifically the officers that were involved, the worst offenders. So we cooperated with the FBI and the U.S. Attorney's Office. We cooperated with... COPA, we, we cooperated with the state's attorney's office and gave full videotaped statements about what had happened. Um, I think the FBI was very interested in the case after they saw the videos. More than two years later, no criminal charges have been filed. CPD has now given suspension notices to five officers directly involved in the Chinchilla and Fix cases. That includes 180-day suspensions for evidence technician Richard Bankus and Officer Reginald Foster. One officer resigned while COPA was investigating the incident. There was a handful that I thought their conduct was so bad that they should be separated from the department. A good number of these officers received substantial uh, penalties, including some who had half year long suspensions. That's a very long time. You don't often see that and uh, you particularly don't often see it where there's no disagreement on that point between COPA and the CPD. And that's what we saw here. In a couple of these instances, there was no disagreement as to these lengthy sentences. So it really underscores the severity of the conduct in those handful of cases. Seven other officers who were part of the police response to the May 2020 protest also received suspension notifications for reasons including excessive force, improper detentions, not activating body-worn cameras, failing to report or intervene in misconduct, and not filing required paperwork. A deputy chief retired before COPA could interview him about his involvement. It does show some level of accountability that the city, um, both in the civil case agreeing that judgment would enter against the city of Chicago and that they would be compensated for their treatment um, at the hands of those officers. CPD and COPA ignored our request for on-camera interviews. We reached out to the officers involved but did not hear back. In an email to the I-team, a CPD spokesperson said the officers involved in the excessive force case against the two former Columbia College students are challenging their suspensions. Chuck Gowdy, ABC7 Eyewitness News. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.